Okay, so we're going to have a look at this uh, Jupyter Notebook in more detail. Okay, so okay. so this explains a method how to solve an equation like this, dy over t equals function of uh, t and y, and we give an arbitrary uh, function. Right, so just like last year in, in Tim and Jason's course, uh, we break time intervals uh, uh, into little segments uh, of length h, uh, and then the uh, i th uh, time is uh, h, the little discrete unit of time times i. And i leaks over 0, 1, 2. So we can replace the derivative of the numerical derivative as done in Jason's course last year. Dy by dt is y t plus h minus y t divided by h. And, uh, uh, and this has a little error on it, or order h squared. Okay, if we use this. Uh, uh, so we're trying to solve this equation, and so we introduce a discrete uh, for a, uh, a numerical derivative like that, and then we do a little arrangement. We get y t plus h to y t plus h times the function there, y t. Okay, you can see on the right hand side. So uh, the way we solve this equation, we say what uh, y is at say t equals zero or some arbitrary t, and then we know the uh, y at t equals zero. Uh, we know t and we know y to t is 0, so we know the right hand side, and then we can generate y at uh, t plus h for the first element, is uh, t0, so we generate a time segment 8 units. Uh, and then once we've got uh, y at uh, 8 units, uh, we can use this equation again for uh, t plus t plus h, uh, and then we have everything on the right hand side, and we can generate what the uh, times of y is t plus h. Okay, so this is a generic way of uh, computing uh, solving this equation. Okay, so this is all that abstract. We do this by a simple example. So we'll look at, if you look at this equation here, we'll dy by t equals t squared. Uh, we, we can also just do this by integration. Just move the t over, and, uh, and you get t cubed divided by 3 plus a, the a's the equation constant. And I'm going to choose the problem so that uh, y is 0 at time equals 0, so a is 0. And, and to solve this equation on the computer using all those methods, uh, we write yt plus h equals yt plus h times t squared. This is the of formula. Right, and then here I have a bit of Python code. My starting time, any time I've just decided to, uh, I want to know the value of y at uh, t equals 1. And I've decided to do 100 steps. I work out the number of uh, the step size. This is my little how I discretize my little time intervals. And uh, this is not that the fact that I have to have this uh, open brackets here. This is a bit of a kind of a programming to do because this is using Python 3. So one difference between Python 3 and 2 is the fact that the print statements now you use have to have the thing within brackets. Okay, so what I said is we're going to iterate this equation. How this is written in code is. I start off with t equals 0 here, and then I keep on the loop y equals t is less than t end. And every step of the loop here, I have y equals t plus h times t squared up here. Uh, and then I update the value of t put on h to it. Okay, and in comparison, we, you know the top exact solution is uh, y equals t cubed for 3, and t equals 1. Y is a third, this is the exact answer. Okay. On this. Okay, so the solution is sort of roughly right uh, compared to the exact, it's not so the accuracy is not great. You can play around if you want to reduce the step size. Uh, Global error goes to order h, so the global error reduces very, very slowly. So it's not great, but. Uh, and so I want to do this for the uh, simple uh, mass on the spring and the force work. But the uh, trouble is, this method is not very accurate. So a better method is to use something called midpoint, which is sort of using the same idea, 
So, so we, we were again trying to solve the solution dy by c to the f for the t and h. Uh, and this time, uh, I'm not going to need this solution, we have our y for c plus h. There's a slightly more complicated function on the right hand side, essentially using the fact that you can evolve up to the midpoint and use some of that information. And I think if you tailor expand all this, uh, the errors are, are much less instead of uh, probably h to be cubed. Okay, so and this just means because the error depends on final error. Remember, it's uh, h squared, that's it here, and then the solution for accurate. Okay. Okay, but coding wise it's not too much different from that above. How does this work with this example? Uh, so again we have uh, solving this equation, we have t start, t equals zero at t end, decided to do 100 steps. Step size is uh, t n minus t start divided by n minus t steps. And, and uh, start at t equals zero plus n. Uh, and then we have a loop here, at y, uh, and here. Okay, in this case, it's a lot easier because the uh, here we uh, evolve the time to a half step forward. Uh, this is a slightly complicated example because there's no y dependence on the right hand side, so it'd be h plus t h plus y, uh, and this is our little evolution equation. Uh, for more complicated dynamics, you have to uh, implement this uh, f t plus h t and y at, uh, uh, at as well. There's no y dependence on the problem. Okay, so you run the thing, you get a step size point zero to one, so this is before, and now the actual y value is much more accurate compared to the exact value, which would be a third. Okay. And this is just because the, the global error on the midpoint algorithm is order h squared, and it's better than the euler algorithm, which is order h. Yeah, you know, this is one thing that algorithms give you, it gives you a more accurate solution for a bigger step size. 